Hey, Jack Squad. How's everybody doing? Hope all is well, and I hope you're making it happen for yourself. Got to make it happen for yourself. Guys, uh, before I get started, like, share, comment, subscribe. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. All of my social media stuff is down in the description box, as well as my email and my cash app. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. I'm so excited. I couldn't wait to tell y'all. I'm so excited. Let me open my water. My water froze. I'm so excited. Y'all know why? Because I went to church today, and I believe I found the church that I will make my home. Got to go a few more times. Probably some months, but I'm going to go a few more times before I go to another church. I'm going to see what they're giving, right, if it's consistent. But I think I have found my church home. Do y'all know? Y'all don't know how much that excites me, right? Excites me. I love church. It excites me. Save my life. Anyway, um, uh, I was at work and just talking with my coworkers, you know, and I was expressing that, you know, we was talking about whatever. I was like, I'm looking for a church, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'd have been about six, seven months. I ain't, ain't nobody, you know. And the one girl was like, you don't want to go to my church because it's a little bitty church. You know, she's real country too, bless her heart. So I imagine, you know, she's a little storefront, you know, everybody can, whatever, whatever. She's like, you don't want to go there. She said, but our supervisor, his church is popular. So I was like, I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. Right. I need, I need the spirit. I need it to be Holy Ghost field, spirit field, all the fields. Right. I need a preacher to preach, the choir to sing, the ushers to usher, the, the parking lot do the parking lot. I need everybody to do everything. Right. I need all the people. And uh, she was like, yes, yeah. so I went over there and asked him. I said, now listen, I need, uh, I need the church. I need all the people, the deacons, the the uh the uh choirs i need the choir director you know what kind of choir director i need i need one of them to be the way i need them to be i'm gonna let y'all just use your imagination for that i don't want the avengers coming after me but it's the truth right can't have a baptist church if you don't have one of them so anyway he said yeah they had two services okay cool 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 i go i want first i watched their video I always do that. I watch the YouTube videos if they have one. If, they, if the church don't have a website, it's one of two things. They're the older congregation or they ain't, just ain't no good, right? So, go to the website. I was able to see current Sundays. He was singing the songs. Not everybody sing the songs, but they can't. Can they really sing the songs, right? I need to feel the songs. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you helped me. Never would have made it. That's what I need. I don't really like praise and worship, them kind of songs. I don't really like them. I need to feel it, right? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I was watching it. Let me, let me tell y'all something. I was watching it either last night or night before. Night before. I could hardly go to sleep from watching it. I never do that. I just scan through and, you know. I said, okay, I'm going. I had planned to go somewhere else. But I'm going. I went. Now it is about 35 minutes away from me. But everything is 30 minutes away for the most part. I go, my job is 30 minutes away, right? So everything is just 30 minutes away. Got to get on the freeway for the most part, right? Okay, cool. I go, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm so happy I don't know what to do, right? I will be back next week. Can't get, can't wait to get back next week, right? I'm going to go for a month straight. See how every Sunday is. And this month happens to be the pastor's anniversary month. And they celebrate all month. Yeah, all month. So I'm going. I found it. We gonna see, right? Now, I'm gonna still visit a couple more others. You know, I really wanted to find a church near my home, but that didn't that didn't work out like that, right? And they gave me some more suggestions, but I don't think I like that because I'm not really into non-denominational churches or churches with a stage. That's fine. If that's what you do. That's fine, right? I go. I attend. I've been, and I'll go back again. But for my own church home, I don't want it to have a stage. I need it to have a pulpit with some preacher chairs and some other preachers up there. I don't want the pulpit with the sliding uh, podium. I don't. That ain't what I want. Okay, the old school with my church, right? But anyway, I found it. So I just, I'm just telling y'all, YouTube family, Jack Squad. I think I found it, right? Anyway, y'all, I watched Love and Marriage Huntsville. Didn't really get that much. I'm gonna try to give y'all what I, what it, what it gave me. Not much, right? Um, the biggest takeaway from yesterday for me 
which is probably why it went solemn for me, is that Kimmy found two lumps, right? So now this was pre-recorded. I, I don't know if she um, has cancer. I don't even like saying the word, y'all. That's just how I am, right? She found two lumps and it was sad. And then she had to keep it to herself. She's sort of like me. You keep things to yourself, which gives, which does more harm than good. Um, and sometimes that's because you just don't know how to receive love and care, right? Um, but uh, th 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 that was the takeaway for me. But anyway, it starts off with the guys. Now, I'm glad to see Stormy's husband, Courtney. They're filming him more, right? Uh... They're filming him more. He might be getting ready to replace Lou and them, right? Because, you know, but we'll see. Now, I don't know exactly what he does, but he has a lot of money. Like I said, they live on acres of land, right? They got a farm or a state or something. You know, they have an estate. When you have an estate, you have money and a lot of land. A lot of acres come with an estate, right? And they started off, uh, they all met out there. Um... Maurice, Marceau, Martel, uh, Lou, and um, Courtney. Courtney set it up because he said he was, he wanted to tell the guys that his wife Stormy is having a, a peace party. Well, <clears throat> and Stormy said she wanted to redo of the, all the girls together because she was sort of to blame for the the pajama thon or whatever it was called. Right? Listen, Stormy came in hot. Now, the way they're trying to flip it and portray her now, I don't believe. I don't believe that Stormy. I believe the Stormy that we saw. That's who I believe. I don't believe this kumbaya, we lighting candles, lighting incense, ringing the bell. I, I don't believe that Stormy. Not saying she don't do that, but I just don't believe she was too. She was too rah-rah in a country kind of way. She was too rah-rah. Too rah-rah for me. You know, for no, nobody didn't know you. You was too rah-rah, right? Um, but anyway, the guys was playing ball. None of them could make a basket, uh, <clears throat> but it was fun and it was good to see them all getting along. And just like the guys on Married to Medicine, and I guess guys are just like that. I never really paid that any attention before. Guys can have a fallout and still come back together and be all right. They say what they got to say, do what they got to do, even if they have to scrap and then come back and be okay. Um, and that's what Marceau has said. Um, but, um, you know, that's just how guys are. I, I never paid that any attention before, right? You know, women, we go, we can hold on. We can hold on. We can hold on. We can hold on. I'm. That's why I'm going to therapy, so I can work on not holding on. Because in my mind, it's like, okay, I don't fool with you. I don't hate you. And I, I just don't fool with you, and I can go on with my life happily. But some things you have to clear up, forgive, and make amends. So I'm working on that. But anyway, uh, Courtney tells Marceau he's interested in commercial real estate. Listen, there's not a lot of black men in that. I know we had a we had a uh, we had a construction company. I think it was black called Turner in Cleveland. I don't know if they. I'm sure they're still around, but I think they were black or did a lot with black folks or something like that. That's a hard um, field to break into for black folks, right? And for these guys and to for them to be in Huntsville and capitalize on things that black folks are not normally capitalizing on, kudos to them. Like, they got the title company, Maurice and Kimmy, and uh, Marceau is in commercial real estate. Um, I think Martel was um, residential real estate, right? But the fact that they in the commercial building or whatever it is, they, they building. They're builders, right? My hat goes off to them. And then Courtney also told, he told Marceau, see, Marceau is an easy read. He's an easy to tell who he is, right? Uh, Courtney says he made more money with his wife, and his wife is included in everything. Marceau said he don't basically say he don't want to see her at work, at home, everywhere, all the time, all the time. And so then he said, "Well, I made twenty million with my wife." He said, "Well, I made seventeen without mine." I don't know if that was the right thing to say, but I get it. But uh, he was saying you could have doubled that had your wife been helping you. You know, that's what Courtney was telling. He said, "I just don't think you like." Did he say like women or like? Dealing with women, something to that effect. And Marceau kind of said, yeah, right? Um, so when they're talking after the, they're playing basketball, Martel says that he wants to see his kids happy. Now, this was taped way back because we've all seen them when they went to, um, what was it called in Florida? Destin. We already saw that. That was months ago. So this has been taped, right? But he's telling the guys that um, he's going to Destin with his family. 
And they thought that was good and commendable. And they said, well, and Marceau and somebody said, well, do you think that's confusing the kids? Like, you know, mom and dad going to get back together. And, Mar and Mar Maurice told him, he said, you know, my dad, mom and dad broke up. And then they would date and stuff. And we would always be hopeful that they was going to get back together. Right? Um, and I could see how that would be like. I didn't have a mama or a daddy. But, you know, I'm grown and I've heard other people talk. So I guess if you raised up in the household with your mom and dad and they split up, that could be devastating, right? Um, I'm not going to say I know how that feels because I don't. But if you want to be, if you're used to being in that big happy family and then the family split up. But what I see a lot of people doing these days is the co-parenting. That's a new, relatively new term. Um, and going on trips together. I've seen that in real life. Like, I commend you. I don't know if I could have done that because I don't want to be bothered with you. You know, I don't know. I doubt it. Not at that age when I was half my kids were young. Heck no. I couldn't have did that. Mm -mm, that almost made me cuss. No. Because I don't like you enough to be around you. No. Mm -mm, you ain't did enough. But those guys are good fathers. That's my neighbor next door. Listen, y'all. I know I was hearing sounds. My, see, let me tell y'all something. In Cleveland... My neighbors were across the street and down the street. I didn't have a neighbor right next door to me. I did when I first bought my house, and then that lady left. She left She left her house. And her husband, they left and went somewhere, right? So they left the house. A lot of people were leaving their houses in Cleveland, just abandoning them because they were paying more than what they were worth or whatever the situation was, right? And that happened on my street. Well, I'm not really used to neighbors and sounds and stuff. All the sounds I hear is, you know, and I'm not used to cars running up and down the street, right? Because I lived on a dead end. It was quiet. It was peaceful. It was my serenity, right? Except for the gunfire and the sirens I would hear. But, so I've been hearing this. I don't know if y'all paid me any attention, but I've been stopping because I don't want to, you know, but I've been listening like, what is that? It's my neighbor. She's a hoarder, a real hoarder. I'm waiting on the truck and the TV crew to pull up any minute, right? She's a hoarder, right? I haven't been in her house, but her backyard is atrocious. It's a high fit, so you can't really see. You can't see. I would have never saw. But uh, my landlord sent somebody over here to cut the grass, and he mistakenly went over there. And they were sending me pictures of what they'd done. And, I, and she was like, you got to move. I, that's not my yard, lady. It's not, I have a property manager. She ain't never been. I, that's not my house. Me, um, me and her almost went to blows because that is not my house. So when the guy finally did come back, he said he was next door. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's a hoarder. I can look out on the side from her front to her front door out this window here. First of all, let me tell y'all something. I know this off topic, but let me just get this out my off my chest. She had some trees cut months ago. I've been here almost a year. She had some trees cut seasons ago. They left the cutting from the trees. There's a big mountain of it that is turned into something, right? It's dead. That's at the tip of her driveway. But if you ride down the street, it look like it's my house. But it's not. It's her mess, right? She got another big bag, big giant, giant, giant bag of something sitting in her driveway, right? She got all kind of bull over there, right? She'll open up the... She has an SUV. She will open up the back part and leave it up all day. Why? I don't know, right? And to top it all off, she's a white lady, older white lady. She got a cat, and sometimes she puts scarves on. You know, it's just crazy, right? The cat always come over here. I got to show him away. But on top of all of that, she got a dude. Okay? She got a dude. All right? I'll just leave that right there. But anyway, she's back there digging around and doing something. And I keep hearing the noise. I couldn't figure it out. I forgot I got an old crazy neighbor next door. She don't say nothing. She don't bother me. Just She's putting the property value down on the whole street. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, anyway, back to what I was saying, you know, I had to figure out that noise. Look, listen, y'all, I'm used to living by myself, even though I had a, I had a guy, I'm still used to, I'm a, I was a single parent. So I'm used to, when I hear noises, it's me. I'm the police. I'm the, uh, go check it outer. I'm the everything. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm still like that. Even though my kids is grown and gone, I'm still like that. So when I hear noises, I can't just hear a noise and ignore it. I got to check it out. What is that? Okay. Now I don't ran off at the mouth. All right. Anyway, y'all, uh, Martel was saying, you know, his kids be happy. He always want to do is see his kids happy. So he's putting his, his kids happiness over him and him and uh, Mel both are putting their kids happiness over how they feel about each other, which I commend. That take, that's, that's big. That take a lot to do. That take a lot to do. Cause you sit over there all the time and look like I want to punch you in your eye. 
that take a lot to do, right? So um, he says he puts his kids' happiness, right? Now, uh, and he wants to see them in a positive light, which I thought is good. I don't know if somebody coaxing Martell, he just know these things. I don't know. It seems like he's getting a little smarter. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Courtney says, Stormy is spiritual. Now, right here in my notes, I put a face. And she may be because she likes, you know, different things. And she went into the, to the spiritual store to get a bell and this and that. And she got sage. And I got all that too, right? What I'm saying is, you didn't come off. Now, maybe they're trying to turn her image around because they want to be on the show. That's what I'm saying. Because I think now they're just friends. But now they put him on there because I don't think he wanted to be on there at first. Now, he's they're showing more of him. So, I think that she's trying to change her image. And Destiny may be out or Lou and Tiffany may. Because they're too private. Y'all too private. Talking about you transparent. Y'all too private to be on a reality show. I'm just saying. And uh, so anyway, he was saying a storm. He was telling the guys. So uh, Marceau, somebody said, well, good luck with that, right? So Mel and Stormy meet to discuss the peace party that Stormy wants to potentially have. And Mel was looking at her like, girl, I don't know why. I don't know why, right? She said, well, who coming? So of course, you named all the people on the show, all the ladies on the show. That's who coming. You know who coming. Um, uh, anyway, Kimmy and Maurice go to their theater room. When they first seen it, I was like, ooh, they got a theater room. So they have built. See, this is when you got a guy that's a builder. When you live with Bob the Builder, you get things, right? They they have finished their theater room. And they was getting ready to sit down and watch a movie or whatever and eat popcorn. Well, he brought her some some, some, some kibbles and, you know, some things to eat, um, some tidbits. And then that's what she got to talking about, the lumps and all that. And that was sad. I kind of, like, turned off from that. um, Because that's sad. That's sad, right? They're a newlywed couple, living life, life getting where you want it to be, and then boom, you hit with this. That's sad. So anyway, they talked about that. Um, um, she's had a lump in her breast and in her left nose. And Maurice said he ain't going nowhere. He's going to be there. He's going to be there every step of the way, which I have no doubts about that. Um, and then she said, I, this ain't what you signed up for. And I like what he said. He said, I signed up for all of it. Good to bad to death do us part. I was like, go Maurice. Go Maurice, right? Because that's what a husband's supposed to say. You should never feel alone when you got a husband. Okay? Um, so then they go to the party. Now Destiny bring her friend. She bring a plus one. Why? I don't know. She bring her friend, which I think is kind of rude if you don't tell the host. I'm going to bring somebody because you don't know what the setup is, what the catering is, what the food is, which I'm sure they had enough of. But I just think it's rude unless you notify the host, hey, I'm bringing uh, Charlie Mae with me. You know what I'm saying? Was she back up? Was she, what was she, what was she, right? So anyway, uh, Destiny can't let go of the beef with her and Mel. See, what Destiny needs to do it's act like Mel ain't even there. Quit letting that bother you. Mel don't like you. She ain't fooling with you. Let cut it. Quit letting that bother you. Please. Quit that looks it looks immature and it looks like you um it looks like you're thirsty for a friend. Mel ain't your friend. She's nobody's friend. She showed us all that. Let it go. I don't care how close you and Mel was, how much night night y'all was talking, how much, how much whatever y'all was doing, y'all was doing kiki and ha ha and kicking it and this and that. She's not your friend. She was probably never your friend. Let it go. Uh, I don't think, I think Mel is cordial with people. I don't think she has the, the capacity to be close with anyone besides her mama. That's just what I think. She don't have that capacity to do that. She don't. Because I thought her and Tisha and all them was so super tight. Now she act like she don't even know Tisha. Like she just met Tisha. You know, that's who she is. So get over that. I wouldn't give Mel the time of day as far as you didn't speak to me. We not cool no more. Forget her. Forget her. Because you feed into it and it's growing. Let it go. I, matter of fact, when I would be in, and maybe I think, I just, it just hit me. Maybe she's mad because Mel is an executive producer. And maybe she think Mel can get her off the show and she need the men's. But what, what Destiny needs to do is be cool with Carlos King and production. That's the, don't worry about Mel. 
Don't worry about Mel. Mel's executive producer by title. She probably ain't got much to say so about too much or nothing. Listen, I wouldn't stun Mel. I would not. I would not. As a matter of fact, I would be trying to get me a whole different storyline. My boyfriend, even though I don't think he wants to be on there, uh, I would try to be stirring up me some 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 some, some TV time because we don't see you that much, and this is a group gathering. We don't see you. You don't have enough of a storyline, so you need to be talking your boyfriend into uh, whatever y'all about to be doing and telling Carlos we about to be doing this, this, and that, so you could be on next season. That's what you need to be doing because reality shows, like them or not, they are great platforms for whatever you have going on in your life. Great platforms. Some people that come on a reality show, we even thought nothing about them until they got a reality show. And whatever they were doing, whatever business they were in, whatever career they chose is blossoming. And we know them and they're icons. You know, their household names. We talk about them. So you need to get on the bandwagon, Destiny, because Destiny is a beautiful girl. You got a business. You need to puff it up. Quit, quit being sad and mad and angry about Mel and about Tiffany. Forget them. I would pay them dust. Dust. When I come into the room, I would be the light. Hey, y'all, what's going on? Hey, Mel, hey, Tiff, hey, Des, hey, Tish, Tisha. Hey, everybody, what we doing? And leave it at that. I would have a gracious greeting, and I wouldn't pay no more attention after that. No more. No more. See, listen, y'all, you got to fight fire with fire. You play the game, play the game. Play the game. And ain't no greater game than a psychological one. Play it. Because you, you need them coins that they're giving you. They're probably not giving much, but you need them coins. Whatever it is, you need it. Get it. Don't quit worrying about mail and what mail did and mail didn't speak. And Tiffany said this. You know what I didn't like? Tiffany sat right down. See, Tiffany is typical. <clears throat> it's just like a typical mixed girl. Uh, she says, uh, like she so don't know what's going on. No, no, no. Oh, wow, what? And then it's, she throw daggers. They might be light. But they powerful. So when they sit down, she immediately, and they say, well, Stormy said, we're going to play a game. I knew that game was going to go wrong. She we're going to play a game, what you, what you heard, what you saw, what you said, something, whatever, right? Um, and it was Tiffany's turn, and she said Destiny. She picked Destiny to apologize to or say what she heard from her that she misunderstood. And then Tiffany said, okay. I mean, Destiny said, okay, well, come on, let's go in, you know. And then she says, is this Detroit? And with a puzzled look, like, don't try to gaslight me or egg me on. And then uh, Destiny said, yeah, could be. Like, I'm from Detroit. Like, I'm from Cleveland. Cleveland and Detroit is the same city, basically. Cleveland, Detroit, Philly. Especially, but especially Cleveland and Detroit are very much alike, right? Um, You want to keep poking the bear to see what, 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 what Detroit is like? I'm about to show you. She need to check her real, real good without cussing, right? And then she needed to ignore her and Mel from now, from this point on. I would ignore them. Because whether you want to believe it or not, Tiffany is definitely on Mel's side. Mm -hmm. So that's her friend. She brought her into the fold. I would ignore her and Mel. I would super ignore Mel. Super ignore. Because Mel think everybody got it out for her. I think she likes that. I would ignore her to the utmost, to the 15th power, to the 15th power. All right. Anyway, um, uh, Tiffany, I put down here, Tiffany's just corny to me. And I'm, 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 I was sick of this episode. And like I said, basically, I was daydreaming after that. It was on, but it didn't give me much. And what the takeaway, like I said, was Kimmy may have a diagnosis of cancer. Maybe. I'm not going to put it out there. Um, so I got to go on her Instagram because that was months ago and see what's going on with it. Um, you know, everything don't come down my feed all the time. So anyway, y'all, that's what it was. It didn't give much. It didn't give much. You know, Wanda wasn't on there. Uh, Wanda, we might not see Wanda for a while <laughs> as, as should be. Right. But, um, anyway, uh, that's that on that y'all. Don't forget to like, hit the like button. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't, I didn't talk about, uh, my Sunday shows, Real Housewives of Potomac and Marriage Medicine. I have my notes and all that, but I just didn't have the time. So it's going to be an extended version probably tomorrow. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. It's going to be an extended version of both of those tomorrow. We'll talk about last week and this week. But anyway, because uh, this is the last episode of uh, this is going to be the last, this is going to be the third uh, episode of the reunion. So that's going to be over with the Marriage Medicine. 
for a while. Um, but anyway, y'all, don't forget to like, like I said, uh, share me with your folks. Um, everybody have a great day. Um, and, uh, you know, just be cool. That's what I want y'all to do. Be cool. Can y'all do that? All right.